I'm a uh, I'm 62 years old, and uh, I think I have an enlarged prostate, so I have to make one pit stop, buddy. Well, I'm 81 years old, and I know what you think, and I know how you. <laughs> Good to uh, talk to a super veteran like you, Ron. I was telling the community a bit about your background. In fact, we were talking about certain cycles that uh, you know I interview some of the best of the best and do a lot of uh, reading and have my own views of what's happening cyclically and I read your bio that you're one of the top three in the Brett, Bretton Woods survey and you're, you. known for, and you're known for your 40-year cycle work and uh, one of your greatest calls was in 1995 when you were predicting 10k in the Dow when it was trading 3,800, you're quoted everywhere in Bloomberg, etc. So what a great time to have you, Ron, with us as the debate about where we stand cyclically uh, in financial markets and economic cycles and where we're at. So why don't you just give me a view. Uh, I was talking about alternation in the 30s. Germany had hyperinflation, the U.S. had deflation, and if we enter a period where there's some type of depression that I think uh, it's going to be alternation this time, where the U.S. could have an inflationary type depression, and with what's happening in the Eurozone, um, it could be deflationary there this time, exactly the opposite of what happened in the 30s. What's your work saying about where we're at um, with the worst start in stock market history in January? And here we are, just a whisper away from new highs in the market. Uh, can you tell us what market thesis you're working with, with your 40-year cycle, et cetera? Well, to start with, just to remind, just to uh, bring you back up to date as to what happened in the last uh, month or so, I just came back from New York where I was got, a, got an award from the MTA, which is the Market Technicians Association. And uh, Congratulations. So I, thank you very much. I was very proud of that because uh, because this is, I'm already a lifetime honorary member of the Canadian Society of Technical Analysts, which I started myself uh, and was first president of, but now having something from the New York Society, that was a real pleasure. Now, um, I'm not in too much uh, in, I, I'm, I'm really uh, work on cycles, but work on stock cycles. So you brought up a very interesting uh, uh, question about the 30s and the inflation. And uh, let me tell you, I was born in Hungary, and we went through a very similar inflation right after the war. So I'm very much aware of what it's like to have been in inflation. Right. But I believe that you are presenting and point and showing a very negative picture which uh, I don't quite agree with. If we look at the Dow, I don't know if you can see this screen. Do you see my screen now? Uh, what you have to do is go up to the upper left-hand corner, Ron. There's a green box with an arrow, and you click that. Okay. And then I that, and then click the desktop you want to show. There it is. Do you see it? We got it. Okay. So we're looking at the Dow. And right. as well. As far as uh, uh, the story of the Dow concerned, the years are not mentioned here, and I right. don't know if you, if you see my arrow. But based on my uh, yeah, that was uh, six six, you know, that's when the S and P was six sixty six, the bottom is, of the financial crisis, March two thousand nine. That is correct. That is correct. Now, uh, based on my uh, discovery of the 40-year periodicity in the market, the 40-year cycle or 40-year wave, whichever you want to call it, uh, I believe that roughly about every 40 years the market has a major, major secular bear. Something that happened in the late 1800, something that happened in 1929 and the second leg in 1932 roughly. Same thing that happened in 1970, second leg was in 1974. And the one it happened in 2002, and the second leg was 2008. And this is the picture of the ending at 2008. Since at the beginning in 2009, no, I should, I'm sorry, 2009. At the right. beginning in 2009, at March of 2009, which is where uh, my cursor is, and I don't know if you could see it, um, see we began a new secular bull market. 
That means that we have begun the first bull cycle, cyclical bull within this huge secular bull. And this breaks down, in my opinion, breaks down into one up leg, which ended roughly about here. We had a corrective period, almost like what the LS people would call leg two. We had a huge leg three that ended in middle of last year. And since that, we've been in a very wide horizontal correction, roughly in between below 16,000 and, and, and roughly above around 18,000. Can I ask you how you know how you know and how you assume that it's just a correction rather than distribution because it's a pretty long time frame for uh, consolidation? Don't you agree? Uh, yes, this time it is longer than what normally would expect. But but at the same time, remember that this low here happened in 20 the late late 2011. Yes, and yeah. we had a huge, huge leg three. So it would, it, therefore, it is not surprise to have a very extended corrective period, which okay. can happen in one of two ways, as you very well know, Dale. Either in time in or price. Time or price. And yeah. so this, instead of having it in price, so it seems we're having right. it in time. So based on the length of the three, we're having a lengthy four. Okay, got it. And uh, your would that uh, view be negated, closing back under that fifteen five level, or would well, that just be a more of an extended correction? Well, uh, the first reaction oh. is that I don't believe it's going to happen. The second okay. reaction is that yes, it would if it comes down again, it should stop around fifteen fifty sixteen thousand, and but at the same time, based on the research and technical uh, tools that I use, the market is more likely to break on the upside than to come back down to 16,000. Okay, so maybe we get just some type of uh, FIB correction from this recent rally that we had and then we blow through the highs. Do you have um, any upside targets? It looks to me like it would measure about 22,000 on a breakout. Um, does your work project not just time but price as well? I use uh, a very, very old method of point and figure charting. Oh, it's yes. The, yes, the X's and O's. The X's and O's, and uh, it's a system that actually was first devised by Mr. Dow himself, and right. it, it's been bastardized by certain people who seem to think that rever that uh, multi-reversals work better than single reversals. I still use, based on the book that Dow wrote, and his, and his uh, students, students handed, handed down, handed down, to the gentleman whose name is Whalen, which is the system that I use, which is a one-point reversal. That, does, that means, in a stock, means one dollar, one point. That's why it's called a point figure chart. And okay. in case of a Dow, we use a 50-unit reversal. So based on that, when you do a measurement of this whole W formation here. 28,000. No, for 21,000 for now. Okay. At this stage. Could we, you know, we could go ahead, but at this stage, uh, I particularly uh, feel that 20, uh, 21,000 is our first target. Okay. And it also means that for the S&P, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I can't go to the, well, I can't so that, go to That would be, uh, what, uh, 2,200 to 2,400 S&P? 2,500 on S&P, yes. Okay. So basically, uh, you, you could even do it arithmetically, you know, you just take uh, the recent range and uh, breakout of the recent range gives you a measured move to your point and figure targets too. So um, I have your view, and uh, you know I can, you know I can believe that something like this could happen. I think the interesting part of this is going to be Ron. We've had this recent recovery in commodities, and they were really the source of problems during the last year with the high yield market under pressure because of what happened to oil. Oil has recently bottomed. 
Uh, gold was the best performer. Gold stocks, the best performer of uh, the first quarter. Could it be that the leadership for these long-term moves is going to be inflation hedges and commodities, which were uh, neglected and under pressure for since 2011, that they become the new leadership and it's not Facebook? Historically, like five is uh, mainly fueled by commodity type of stocks and okay. commodity type of, of, uh, of, of uh, issues. Uh, this is why uh, the this time of the within the cycle, Canada and Australia should do well because of because of our uh, commodity oriented economy. Yeah, so uh, people could, so people could stop uh, committing suicide in Alberta. That better times I, are ahead. I think they should do that. Yes. Okay, because uh, they've been under a lot of pressure, and uh, you know, a lot of oil workers and everyone thrown out of a job, and you know, I, I don't know how you felt, but when we were at twenty six dollars in February, the only chatter I saw was how low can crude go rather than could it even rally and there's still a debate out that we could have some type of retest uh, you being from Canada and uh, you know I correlate the Canadian dollar a lot with the oil price uh, what's your view on oil uh, do you think the lows were in are in and all we get is a little pullback after this recent advance or could we have a full-blown retest in oil uh, I think the the low was, low probably has been reached. Uh, maybe a bit of a pullback would not be a disaster here, and that's the same thing goes for the Canadian dollar. A little bit of a pullback would not hurt, but uh, given given where we are in the economy, given where we are in the cycle, I believe that uh, we could have a better picture for both the oil and the and the Canadian dollar. Okay, um, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting. I'm not suggesting $120 for oil or for a dollar twenty for uh, for the Canadian dollar as a as versus the U.S. But a li but uh, as a slow a slow very very slow recovery that will take a per a period of time. A lot of people talking 85 as a possible count in crude uh, yeah, oil. I, I I don't think it would be a major disagreement on my part. Okay. Yeah. And uh, where, where do you stand on gold? Uh, we've had $250 rally. A lot of the mining shares have doubled and tripled in value, especially the juniors. Um, to me, it looks like this was the first wave up, and that even if we have one more push above $1,300, there'll be, if you're patient, that there could be another entry down in the low 1100 range. Um, What's your take on gold, and you believe that this is the beginning of a huge bull market in gold that could exceed the 2011 highs of 1900? Uh, the gold has uh, has had a had a very very uh, obviously we all know a very definite and major down leg from uh, about 1800 or thereabouts uh, recently from 2012, yeah. and uh, we have broken trend lines. We had recovered. There is a resistance around 1,300 to 1,350, which need which need to be overcome. And at the same time, for the short term, we probably could use a minor correction back to let's say 1,175 or thereabouts. But the but the cycle has turned in the gold, and eventually I look for higher prices. Okay. Um, is your view on the rest of the world as sanguine? The U.S. Uh, has been described as the cleanest shirt in a, a dirty neighborhood, uh, showing the most <laughs> showing the most relative strength globally, and it's showing up in the bourses with the Dow and S and P on the verge of new highs, while uh, what's happening with the DAX and the FTSE and the Chinese market and uh, especially Japan as of late um, is showing much more weakness. Is the U.S. still going to be the leader or could even emerging markets which were also 
under severe pressure because of the commodity collapse begin to outperform the U.S.? Well, I'll let, I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, I have always believed that the UK market is a leader to the North American, to the, the U.S. market. You and know so what, me too. Yeah, I rarely talk to anyone who brings that up. I bring it up to people. I was schooled that way. You know, Ron, I'm, you know, I'm 62, but I used to follow the FTSE, and it was always a leader uh, to me. Uh, I would look at it uh, if the FTSE was making new highs and our markets were lagging, I would say it was foreshadowing what was going to happen here. So it's not a secret to me, but probably a secret to most people under the age of 40. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Those people under age of 40 uh, need to need a little bit of uh, learning to uh, to uh, to uh, get more more to get more history behind their belts. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, FTSE is uh, could be considered also on the verge of a breakout, and if that happens, that will be very bullish also for it and for the North American market. So it all ties in. Now there's a lot of talk, Dale, uh, about how. The market, the New York market, cannot go higher. I just came back from this from a seminar where most of the speakers said, "Well, you know, the the gold and the New York market never go hand in hand. If one goes up, the other come must come down." And again, these were 20, 25 yeah. to 30 year old people who haven't had the experience that you and I had. Uh, right. It is quite possible for the, both the U.S. market and for gold to go higher uh, to, uh, together in, in, in sync, yes. And so, okay. <coughs> so if the FTSE breaks out here, which would be wonderful and it would be, it would herald a, um, a beginning of the, it would, con it would, it would support the, my, right. my concept that the New York market has read, is ready to go into new all-time high territory. Okay, do you factor in when you look at FTSE and do you have a view as to whether or not there will be a Brexit? I'm sorry, as I said, I don't go into uh, this type of things. So okay, I can't, I can't so the market will factor it in and uh, perhaps uh, the breakout is delayed. Into, maybe it's going to be a sell the rumor by the fact type of thing. So, you know, it is a big story. A lot of people are worried about the UK leaving the Eurozone, the Brexit is the yeah. new wall of worry for the market. Um, well, let the, let the big guys decide on that. <laughs> okay. It's not All my, right. not into my my working working uh, procedure. Do you have a view on the dollar? Uh, it's our view here and my view that currency is really the linchpin for everything else. Uh, the Stock markets are dwarfed by bond markets, and bond markets are dwarfed by currency markets, and all the talk of currency wars and uh, the race to debase to be competitive. I know it's fundamental. You're a technician. Do you have a technical view on the dollar? Uh, not really. Um, uh, not really, as I said. We don't do commodities. And my comment about the Canadian dollar was mainly because uh, I'm tied to it. <laughs> Never like last week when I had to go to New York, I had to be very aware of how much right. it threw cost me in Canadian dollars. Sorry, Dale, we don't. Uh, that's just, that's uh, okay. Uh, why did they nickname the Canadian dollar the loony? Well, because the back of the, uh, we used to have a Canadian dollar, paper dollar, and a paper right. two dollar. Uh, we changed the, both the one dollar and the two dollar into uh, coin. Okay. And the back of the coin is a loon. All right. Because <laughs> I, I get a little loony trading it. I, in fact, I actually love trading uh, the USD Canadian dollar. Let me get. Uh, I know this has nothing to do with Dale, any market. Dale, Dale, before you get to any further, and do you know the name we we use for the two dollar coin? No. It's a toonie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, you know, I'm really having a good time talking to you today, and Ron, I'd like to ask you, what does the political silly season look like to Canadians when they're watching what's going on here in the U.S. with 
you know, this type of, you know, low-level name-calling, uh, the politics of uh, right-wing and left-wing, when you guys have a pretty moderate leader in Trudeau, and down here in the States, you're either talking about socialism or fascism, depending upon whether it's Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump. Does this concern Canadians with you guys being so close to uh, the political scene that we have going on here in the U.S.? We certainly ha are watching the New York City, uh, the U.S. situation a bit closely. Uh, obviously, it hasn't come to a culmination as yet. Uh, the uh, Personally, I think that Sanders is, a, is really such a socialist and having come from a Hungary, but having born in Hungary, which at one point was a quasi-communist country, I'm very much aware of what socialism is all about, so I, I can't, I couldn't, if I was a U.S. person, I couldn't vote for him. As far as uh, Trump is concerned, uh, he's a sly person that does not show his, he's a, he's a poker player. Uh, yeah. The, you ask him a question, he will never give you the right, and he will never give you the answer that you expect because he wants to uh, have a discussion with you and then bring out his ace and slam it on the table. So he's not telling, he's right now running to be popular, mm -hmm. but and when becomes a president, I'm sure that his tone will totally change. Well, let I'm me ask you. Yeah, well, you, let me ask you this. Do you have an extra room in your house for me to leave the U.S. and come to Canada? You are not the first one to ask, and unfortunately <laughs> I already had <laughs> people bidding for, the, for our extra spare room, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know, during the Vietnam era, a lot of people that didn't want to go to Vietnam left and went to Canada. I, I think we're going to have, you're going to be looking at the second migration of U.S. citizens looking to go elsewhere because of the lack of confidence and of integrity of leadership here of our options. Most likely it'll probably be Hillary, don't you think? Well, before I go there, let me just tell you that there's a joke going around in Canada that if Trump doesn't build a wall between U.S. and Canada, then we may do that. Okay, well I'm going to tell you that the wall that he's building, wherever it is, is not to keep people out, but to keep us in working like cattle. What well, do you that's think? Right. That's right. So, you know, exactly. So, uh, he may build a wall to keep people in or get rid of people for. This wouldn't be the first time. I mean, I don't want to get too political here, but it's not the first time that the United States has got rid of some some people. Uh, it happened uh, most as recently as, uh, as uh, near the Second World War. And right. even before. That uh, I, if I believe my history, I think there was a period of time, way back uh, in the 1800s, where they were sending people back because of uh, was not because people were taking jobs yeah. away from, from the United right. States. Right, the Irish, the Irish uh, during. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not the yeah. first time, but uh, the the only one thing that I I read the book, I read the Trump's book, and the only thing I can tell you is that. Uh, this guy is a poker player. Uh, he's he's very very smart, and he doesn't show his hand whatsoever. He does now. He talks and says what what he believes will get him to the White House, and after that, he's going to probably uh, say and do things fairly different than what he's suggesting now. So, Ron, uh, what's the best way for people to follow you? I know your Twitter handle is at phases hyphen cycles Inc and that's uh, the name of your website and what do you do do you publish a monthly newsletter and have subscribers what's your business model it is we publish a market comment twice a month uh, usually a four pager talking about both the US and the Canadian and the UK market uh, and then during the month we publish numerous stock reports uh, some for buys, some are sales, some are just an update, and anybody would like to have our research, uh, just send us an email, on the, uh, go to a website and sign on for a trial, or send us an email 
and say, I would like to see more of your research or a trial for a seat or a couple of recent publications, and we'll be delighted to, to, to do that. Well, uh, I'm delighted that you chose to join us today, Ron, and edify us and share your views. Um, a great education. Congratulations on your uh, MTI award in the U.S. Uh, probably means much more to you since you started the Canadian Society. It's like something Donald Trump would do is start his own society and then give himself the award. So uh, congr congratulations on that acknowledgement and your your work and uh, that you're still passionate about what's happening in the world, giving us uh, an after optimistic all, view. We have after, an optimistic view. After all these years. Uh, Dale, it was a pleasure talking to you also. I would be delighted to talk to you any time that you wish to. Uh, if we break above uh, into new high in the Dow, uh, that would be maybe another opportunity to then look at how far, how, what, whether the target is still, that, still the same as before or we now have a higher target. And if we start to come down, uh, with, which I wouldn't be surprised at, of a minor correction, but it is amazing how strong the market is and despite of, uh, let me just say something. I get investors intelligence uh, statistics weekly. Right. This Last Wednesday, just uh, two days ago, the Investors Intelligent Report, which historically publishes excerpts from different market letter writers and publishes excerpts from the bullish side people and from the neutral people and from the bearish people, there was not one person who expressed a bullish opinion on the market this week. Not one. So, so you are a follower of, of sentiment, and there, yeah. and there are nothing. Everyone's trying to short and top pick the market here. They might get some short-term relief. Maybe the Dow pulls back to, you know, seventeen thousand, sixteen five, something like that. But people should be viewing any any market pullback as a major buying opportunity, according to Ron Mizell at Phases Life and Cycles Inc. Yes, sir. All right, Ron. Well, have a great weekend. Um, I now will call you my investing warrior brother. Well, and thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And it was great talking to you, Dale. And I look forward to do it again. It's a deal. Ron Good. Mizell, community, live analysis room people, please thank Ron for his time and his views. A view from north of the U.S. and Canada. And now we know that Donald Trump is a poker player. Thank you again, Ron. Take it You're easy, welcome. my friend. Good hunting. You're welcome. Anytime. You too.